At the dawn of pro football, in the early 1900s, the game was mostly played in Midwestern towns like Canton, Detroit, Chicago, and Green Bay, Wisconsin. It wasn't until 1925 that Tim Mara brought football to New York City when he purchased an NFL franchise for $500 and the Giants were born. My father said, uh, how much is it? And I'm not sure whether it was $500 or $2,500. And bear in mind, this time he had never even seen a football game. And they told him what the price was, and he said, well, he said, an empty store with chairs in it is worth that much in New York City. And that's how he became a pro football magnet. In 1927, the Giants won their first NFL title with a record of 11 and one. The following year, they faced off against the Green Bay Packers for the first time ever, beginning a rivalry that would bring great games and magical moments for decades to come. In that first meeting on October 7th, 1928, the Giants would be victorious, beating the Packers 6-0. Little over a month later, the Packers would get the 7-0 shutout win at the Polo Grounds in New York to split the season series. In 1938, the Giants and Packers would face off for the first time ever in the postseason. After already beating Green Bay 15-3 in their first regular season matchup, the Giants would host the Packers once again in the Polo Grounds with the NFL championship at stake. Behind a ferocious defense and an offense led by stars like Tuffy Lehmans, Mel Hine, and Ed Donowski, the Giants would have the recipe for victory. We won it with a lot of players hurt. We won it with the great defensive play. They, they kept us in the game, and, and finally uh, Donowski and Soar put together a last-ditch march. I thought it was a great triumph and it set us up for many years in the future because those rookies became veterans and they carried the team. Despite the team's early success, after their 1938 win, the Giants would enter into a title dry spell that lasted nearly two decades. In 1939, the Packers would enact their revenge, trouncing the Big Blue 27-0 in a championship rematch. New York would once again fall victim to Green Bay in 1944 as coach Curly Lambeau led the pack to their sixth NFL title, beating the Giants 14-7 in the championship game at the Polo Grounds. In 1954, first-year head coach Jim Lee Howell needed to turn around a Giants team that had fallen on hard times. So on the recommendation of owner Wellington Mara, he hired a young, fiery assistant out of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point to be his offensive coordinator. His name was Vince Lombardi. The first time I, I saw Vince in action at, at close range on the sideline as a coach, he was up and down that sideline like an avenging flame. I think that uh, uh, his service under Red Blake at West Point was very useful to him in, in learning how to channel and control his emotions, and he was a very emotional man. The Giants were about to embark on a new era, and they had assembled a group of leaders destined for greatness. You realize we had the greatest coaching staff in the history of the National Football League? Vince Lombardi coached the offense and Tom Landry coached the defense and Jim Lee Howe was the head coach. In 1956, Big Blue moved into the hollow grounds of Yankee Stadium, where success seemed to be contagious. And in just his third season with the team, Lombardi would help the Giants return to glory. Now, 1956 was a very special year by any standard. New York had all of a sudden awakened to the fact that there was a professional football team. And it wasn't just the Yankees, it wasn't just DiMaggio and, and Mickey Mantle. And, uh, all of a sudden we were selling out Yankee Stadium. And it was the year that Lombardi took control of the offense. And we had a pretty good offense. It was an offense that was growing up. But I did love the man, and my love is uh for many reasons. First of all, when he came in to the New York Giants, I think for the first time, he made me dedicate myself to being the best I could be. I never had the speed, the size, or a lot of things that uh, other football players had and have, but he made me get the most out of it. We had a, a magical season. We wound up beating the Chicago Bears for the NFL Championship 47-7. to As far as I'm concerned, that was when not only the Giants arrived, that was when pro football arrived. With the popularity of the NFL on the rise across the country in the mid-1950s, Lombardi would help lead New York into football's golden age. He was a teacher. He was, when he ran a play, 
He would get up and diagram. If he diagrammed it once, he must have diagrammed it 200 times. And he would hit the board. He was an excellent coach. And i tell you how tough he was. Like the kids today, I don't know what he would do. But uh, I ran a screen pass for 86 yards and I go into the Yankee Stadium in center field where the end zone was. And we went ahead and I was happy as a lark because me running 86 yards is a long way. And I come through the end zone and I'm going underneath the goal post and I did a little jump. And I got to the sidelines and he grabbed me and he said, well, have none of that nonsense. You know, I said, what did I do? He said, you jumped. He, you don't want to show off and show the other team that you I wonder what he would do today with everything that's going on, you know. Despite losing to the Baltimore Colts in the 1958 NFL Championship, known as the greatest game ever played, the Giants had staked their claim as one of the NFL's elite franchises. But their success would ultimately come at a cost. At the conclusion of the 1958 season, the Green Bay Packers would lure Lombardi from the Giants, giving him the opportunity he had always dreamed of his first head coaching job. Vince Lombardi became the head coach there and he established a real good team with Paul Horney and Bart Starr and they just had a great run. Vince's impact in Green Bay would be felt immediately. After winning just one game in 1958, the Lombardi-led Packers would improve to 7-5 in 1959, earning him Coach of the Year honors. In 1961, the Giants-Packers rivalry would reach its pinnacle when the two teams met in Green Bay for the NFL championship. The smallest town in the National Football League plays host to the biggest game in pro football as 40,000 hearty fans brave freezing temperature to Pack City Stadium in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Lombardi had assembled a squad of future Hall of Famers, including quarterback Bart Starr and running back Jim Taylor and the versatile Paul Horning, the league's most valuable player that year. Starr would throw for three touchdowns, and Horning would account for 19 total points, scoring on a six-yard run and kicking three field goals en route to a 37-0 shutout victory. As the Packers win their first championship since 1944, for the Giants, the Cinderella team of 1961, a tough loss after their gallant march to the Eastern Conference Championship. In 1962, the Big Blue would get a shot at redemption in the Packers-Giants title game rematch on a frigid day in New York. The encore would prove to be a much more competitive matchup with Green Bay's Jim Taylor scoring the game's only offensive touchdown as the Packers won their second NFL championship in a row with a 16-7 win. Green Bay would add another title in 1965, and when the AFL and NFL agreed to compete for a championship in 1966, the Pack went on to win the first two Super Bowls in 1966 and 1967. Vince Lombardi created a modern-day dynasty in Green Bay. His five titles in eight years is still one of the most historic feats in all of professional sports. The NFL would pay homage to him in 1970 by renaming the Super Bowl World Championship Trophy as the Vince Lombardi Trophy. After winning the NFL championship in 1956, the Giants would have to wait 30 years before they earned a shot at another title. And in their amazing run to the Super Bowl in 1986, they faced the 4-11 Packers in the final game of the regular season, needing a victory to ensure home field advantage throughout the playoffs. In the first half, the Giants jumped out to a quick 24-0 lead. Sims going for Bavaro, touchdown! Third touchdown reception of the year for Mark Bavaro. But the Packers climbed right back into contention, scoring 17 unanswered points in the second quarter. Determined to secure the number one seed in the playoffs, Big Blue would punish the Packers in dominating fashion in the second half, outscoring Green Bay 31-7 in route to a 55-24 triumph at Giants Stadium. Sims wide open, Bavaro, touchdown. Second touchdown reception of the game for Mark Bavaro. The hard-fought win gave New York home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and the Giants swept through the postseason going on to beat the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl XXI. Over the next 20 years, the rivalry sputtered and the teams would meet only five times with the Giants winning three of those contests. But in 2007, the Big Blue Road Warriors traveled to the sub-zero confines of Lambeau Field in Green Bay 
for the NFC Championship game. Welcome to Lambeau Field in Green Bay for the NFC Championship game. Second coldest game ever at Lambeau Field. Minus one degree with a wind chill of minus 23. The years were going to fall off pregame. Pregame. I'm out there and I'm going, this is a mistake. I remember standing on the field before the game, looking across the stadium, thinking, thinking one of us is going to the Super Bowl. You know, the weather is, is cold for both of us and it's either us or them. The Packers were an offensive juggernaut led by their legendary quarterback, Brett Favre. And the underdog Giants looked to play the role of spoiler. That was just, you know, kind of my favorite game. You know, just in Lambeau Field, it's negative 23 degrees, NFC Championship, playing against, you know, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers. I mean, this, this is it. The game starts with the first message being Brandon Jacobs and Woodson. And what a collision that was. And we were standing there on the sideline going, well, we're into this one right away, you know, because that was some collision. Jacobs' bruising collision ignited not only the Giants' offense, but the defense as well. And the Big Blue Wrecking Crew simply pounded their opponent into the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Boy, this has been a well-prepared New York Giants defense. While Eli Manning and Plaxico Burris seemed to be immune to the punishment and the weather, slinging and catching passes in the icy cold air almost at will. Plaxico had 11 catches or so that game. I think, you know, eight or nine of them were the same call. There's just different conversions to it. He ran a hitch. One time he went inside. I threw it, it looked, kind of looked like a slant. The one time he goes outside and I back shoulder it. Another same play, I hit Imani down the sideline where he makes a great catch. Manning looking for Toomer down the sideline, makes a diving catch. Is he in or out? They yes. say he's in at the 12-yard line. The ball, I felt, was a little outside and far. So I was like, I am not going to let this opportunity go to waste. So no matter where I was, no matter what angle my body was at, I felt like I had an opportunity to make that catch. Under the worst conditions and in front of a hostile crowd, Eli threw for 251 yards and no interceptions. It's minus 24 degrees wind chill. And this guy is gripping it and throwing it like nobody's business. You got Eli who's throwing perfect spirals in that weather and you got Plexico's catching with his hands, not his body. And it was the best I've ever seen Eli play, the most confident I've ever seen him be going against the great legend in minus 23 degree weather. And it was like he was totally not affected by anything. Four seconds to go. With four ticks left on the clock, the Giants had a chance to win the game in regulation. Tines from 36 yards out for the win. Snap aside, Beagles gets it down, kick a line drive, and it is no good. Left. Missed it wide left. And we're going to overtime. Let's go, one time. We get the ball back, one drive, field goal, we win this. Oh, now let's go! Let's go, D! And on Green Bay's first possession in overtime, the Big Blue defense would give their kicker a shot at redemption. Far back to pass, takes a deep drop, steps up, looking to his right. The pass intercepted by the Giants at the 40-yard line. Corey Webster got the pick. A stomach for high drama and intrigue, this is it. Doesn't get any better than this. All right, here goes Tynes again from 47 yards. Snap is good. Kick on its way. End over end. Does it have the distance it is? Good! Yeah! Yeah! Lawrence Tynes has kicked the Giants to the Super Bowl after missing at the end of regulation. The improbable triumph at Lambeau Field propelled the Giants into the Super Bowl where they defeated the previously unbeaten New England Patriots 17-14. In its 95-year history, 
The Giants-Packers rivalry has produced thrills and drama for football fans of any generation. Play fake, rolls right, oh. gets sacked by Michael Strahan. It's a new record, Michael Strahan. 22 and a half sacks, breaks the mark held by Mark Gastineau, set 1984. In 2010, the Packers won their fourth Super Bowl and 13th NFL title behind the leadership of quarterback Aaron Rodgers. With the hopes of defending their championship, Green Bay finished the 2011 season with a dominating record of 15-1, including a 38-35 victory over the Giants at MetLife Stadium in Week 13. And the Packers remain undefeated. But the rivalry would reach new heights when the underdog Giants once again traveled to Lambeau Field as the two teams faced off in the 2011 NFC Divisional Playoff game. They were a good team, but we knew we played them earlier in the season, ran right with them, uh, scored a lot of points, and, and you know had a chance to win that game. So we knew you know, offensively we could move the ball. Fastball over the middle, caught inside Packer territory. Nick runs out of a tackle. He's in the 35-30. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants! You know, we were really flowing off offensively. Our defense was getting turnovers, you know, getting stops, getting some pressure on, on Rodgers. And so, you know, the Hail Mary before halftime didn't hurt anything either. Manning back, steps up, heaves one down the middle of the field, into the end zone, and Nix makes the catch for the touchdown! He went up with the big hands and caught it on the Hail Mary on the final play of the half! And you know, that's one of your biggest dreams. You know, as a kid, you always want to make that last second catch, you know, whether it's before a half or, or the end of the game. You know, once he threw it up there, you know, I felt like when I jumped, it was just me and the ball. You know, all I seen was the ball in the air, and I just went up and got it. Once I came down with it, it was one of the best feelings you could ever have. The New York Giants have eliminated the number one seed, Green Bay Packers, as they come to Lambeau Field and outplay Green Bay. They're all in. The Packers would look for some payback five years later when the two teams met up at Lambeau Field in the 2016 NFC wildcard game. Rodgers does this better than anybody. End zone, Cobb, touchdown! Unbelievable! And Green Bay goes on to beat the Giants 38-13 here in wildcard weekend. But in 2022, the Giants would travel across the pond to face the Packers on the pitch at Tottenham Stadium in London. Throws it up deep, wide open as Barkley at midfield, jukes him in at the 40, jumps over a tackle at the 30, to the 25, and finally knocked out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Wildcat formation with Barkley and Brightwell this time. Saquon takes the snap, Saquon bounces outside, Barkley's in for the touchdown, ball game over. The New York Giants have come to London and rang the bell of the Green Bay Packers.